Hey there, welcome to the virtual table. Uh, today, uh, we got ourselves a, a pretty good one. It's uh, Lord of the Rings, the adventure card game. So, interesting story with this. Uh, I was quite a large FFG fan for many years. I think lately they've turned into crap. Um, I know that's just my opinion, but, but they really have. They've not produced... Like, they seem to, like, favor the simpler simpler games that appeal to a more broad audience than um, than they used to. Like, they used to have some really deep choice-type games that would be epically long. I mean, I get that it's, uh, it's all about money. Uh, that's the reason why YouTubers only cover certain games whenever they cover their games, too, because it's all about money. Even though they tell you it's not, it is. It is 100% about money for them. Uh, or otherwise they would be doing D-Day at Omaha Beach because D-Day at Omaha Beach is one of the most awesome solitaire games ever. And so anybody who does solitaire uh, gaming, uh, YouTube videos, and does not cover D-Day at Omaha Beach, they're lying to you if they're saying they do it because they love the game. Um, I know that was just a commentary, and um, but it's a true commentary. <laughs> it's quite accurate. Uh, the, now, with that being said, I'll, I'll stop my complaining and uh, get into this game, which has been covered by other people, so I don't want to pretend like I'm the only one that's ever covered this game. But the, uh, the interesting history about this is that Fantasy Flight Games started to uh, make some apps for their games, which was a really cool idea, but then they got taken over by Asmodee. Asmodee sort of has a software group that does things, but this app, for all intents and purposes, it got abandoned. And um, after it got abandoned, uh, they uh, they really, uh, like, it got picked up by somebody else who I think has done a decent job. So uh, I'll just leave it at that. The game does crash from time to time, so it's not the most stable thing. Um, but you can play for a couple hours between crashes, so... Uh, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Okay, so what do they have here? Uh, this is a really difficult game to explain. If you've ever played the, quote, board game or the living card game that FFG came out with, this is very close. In fact, it, it's been many years since I've played the, uh, the living card game, so I couldn't tell you the difference. I just remember the living card game being so much harder. So I think, if anything, they may have... Um, you may hear some people complain about this one being easier. Um, I don't know. This one seems to be just right to me. But, uh, um, okay, first of all, you have uh, decks. And I have this deck builder here. You can see I have a Dwarven deck, a Hobbit deck, uh, leadership, lore, spirit, tactic. And then, of course, there's a starter one that you'll, like, start the game with. Um, <clears throat> the way it works is you can create any decks you want. You just click on Create Deck, and then you would pick your heroes, which are here, and then you can flip over to your cards, and you can choose your cards. Now, one of the ways they implemented this is that there's a whole bunch of cards that are included in the game, but you have to purchase them not with real money, but with, like, in-game money. So, like, you can see here, I have 14,000 fellowship points. So if I want to buy this, I would spend 2,000 fellowship points to get two copies of this card. Um, or I could just buy one card for 1,000. And um, uh, the other thing uh, to point out is you need to have a level 2 spirit. And how does that work? Well, if you look back at your heroes, the heroes have different colors on them. And those colors are associated with a particular symbol. So uh, this, for example, is a lore hero, Arwen. And the lore is green. And uh, you can filter it to just the, the green heroes. So you can see these are the only green heroes. And if you create a deck... Um, so here, if I hit New Deck. And I make one, two... So it's nothing but lore heroes, right? So it automatically flips me over to the cards once I filled up with heroes. This, by the way, is the starting threat level. The lower number, the better, but don't let that hang you up too much. Um, so now we're going to pick our cards. 
Well, here's the deal. If I uh, filter on any card except for the lore, they're all gray, even if I own them, because you can only match your cards with the hero type. So uh, this should all be familiar for you if you've played the game before. Um, so since I have three sets of lore heroes, this is the only the only card type I can use is green. So you're restricting your card choices to only the green ones. However, there is a sphere level three here, and there's only two of them. These cards are only available if you have all three of these at lore. So it's as simple as this. I have one at lore, so I have a sphere level one. If I have two at lore, I have a sphere level two. If I have three, I have a sphere level three. Now, when you go to sphere level three, there's only these two cards available. That's it. So uh, you have to like really want these two cards in order to do a level three sphere. Now, if I want to like, if I want to take out Freddy here and let's throw in Boromir. Now I have two green and one red. So you can see it automatically filtered to green and red. And then I'm saying I want to see only the level threes. And you can see none of them are available to me. And I hope it makes sense to you by now, but it's because I don't have level three anything. I have level two green and level one red. So none of these are available. So I have to like relax my sphere level to level two. And of course, I can't get a level two red, even if I have them. As you can see here, I have this one, but um, it, it tells you, you have to have two tactic heroes. Now I do have this one unlocked. These two uh, have the little lock symbol, which means I still have to pay for them. So if I want these, I can do it. Like this one here that restores two health to hero is really good. Um, now granted, she doesn't seem to do much in anything else, but um, it's still a very decent one. Uh, this one's also really good. I mean, there's some pretty good uh, greenness here to be had. And then, of course, if I go to level one, all of the red cards are available at level one. Uh, Bjorn here is just one of those situations where I need to pay for him. But Bjorn actually looks quite good. Um, that's interesting. Okay, so... Um, I don't want to go into this in like too much detail, but I at least wanted to give you an idea of like you get to build your own deck, and it's quite um, it's quite good. Uh, I think one of the things is, is I'm not sure this game is being supported much anymore. So like compared to the FFG series where it's got quite a lot of expansion packs, this one I think only has two, and you can get them all for one price. It's like twenty bucks right now. Um, and uh, you get everything. Now, when I say you get everything, you still have to unlock cards. So the cards are in the game. They're available to you. You don't have to pay a single penny extra to get them, but you may have to play the game a bit to unlock them. Uh, let's put it that way. Um, and you could sit here and, and you can click on, like, unclick the ones I own. So these are all the ones I don't own. And you'll notice they all have the little locks. So... Um, I've been progressively gaining fellowship points, and like for example, if I want Bjorn, I can you know spend 2,000, which I don't mind doing, and now I'm down to 12,000, and Bjorn is now in my list of available cards. Um, I have been uh, trying to do, like okay, this is level three uh, sphere, and unlock everything that's level three first because you know they seem to be the most powerful cards. That's a very debatable topic but as you can tell I finally got all the level 3 stuff unlocked I think I'm actually working on the level 2's you can see here there's a few level 2's I haven't done um, and there's five pages of level 2 cards so there's a lot more choices with level 2 than there ever was with uh, level 3 so I think this game rewards you to maybe go two levels in something and then get a third level of something else so and then now the trick to this is like understanding and memorizing all these cards and I don't mean by memorizing them like by um, oh gosh I gotta know I have three of these and two of those that's not what I mean I mean like like this bow of Galadrim might you know combo really well with some green hero um, somewhere else and so that's the thing I'm talking about is being able to know oh this level one card for the red goes really well with the level two you know purple hero um, 
that's what I'm getting at. Like Build the Pony here um, works great with Sam. And so this is purple, and Sam is... Oh, where are you, Sam? Sam is also purple, so that's probably not a great example, but um, like let's say Sam was blue, well you would want that level one purple build the pony card to go with a, um, you'd, you'd want at least one purple hero with your blue Sam in order to be able to pull that off. Okay, so um, this you could talk about forever and ever, um, and then this here by the way is just the expansion packs. So if you want to see what's, what's in the base game, you just click on this. Those are your core cards. And then with the expansion pack, you get these extra heroes. There's actually three pages of heroes that are extra, um, just so you can see. But anyways, I'm going to pause the video real quick, and then uh, let's get into actually playing a game. Okay, so the, the music to this game is actually quite good. Um, I had to turn it off just because... These YouTube videos, they tend to, I don't know why, but the music is not allowed to be played. Or otherwise they claim copyright issues. So I had to take that away. And uh, anyways, the, the deck building aspect of this is very rich. And that's really all I want to say about it at the moment. Um, let's go ahead and leave and not save our changes. Whoops. Um, okay, let's play. There's a couple of things here. There's, um, you can host a multiplayer game, which I uh, did one time, and this total stranger joined me, and we actually had a really good time. Uh, I eventually had to eat, and, um, otherwise, uh, he was playing with me for, gosh, three hours. I think he would have gone another three if I would have let him. Uh, the community is mostly dead, so don't expect to find people all the time, but like, let's say I want to join a game right now, um, there is one game for me to join, and it's this Burglary and Bree, um, we could try to join them, I don't want to do that while I'm doing instruction, so, uh, let's get back out of here, the Solitaire one, though, is very, very rich, and, uh, there's a lot of choices, first of all, the tutorial's not bad, uh, heavily recommend you do it, uh, the final scenario of the tutorial, like they even have a deck building tutorial, but this number five here, Flight Through the Darkness, is a great introductory campaign for when you build a new deck. Come here and do this one just to see how well your deck does. So let's go ahead and, and do that. I know um, probably every video series that you can find uses this one, so it's probably not the best in the world. But uh, um, So for example, this spirit deck of mine is really good. Uh, now when you see the spirit focus, that's the game built these for me. If if you see my name in the front, I built it. Um, now dwarves and hobbits, I also built those. Uh, I've never played the hobbit one, so maybe we should try that one, right? Um, let's see, I think I've done tactic. I think I've done leadership. I don't think I've ever done lore. So we can maybe do that one. And, but yeah, let's try the Hobbit one. Just, I, I don't know how well I built this deck. I don't even remember what I put in it, but we'll, we'll try it. So you can uh, change the difficulty. So um, you can go expert if you really want to. I usually never want to. Um, the quest rewards. So the very first time you complete, you're going to unlock something. And then uh, there's a second and third completion. And I am very baffled as to why... Uh, this is saying I've never uh, completed it. This So what it's saying is, is I've completed it once, but I've never completed it a second or third time. I'm very baffled. I would swear I've completed this many times. But, um, okay, let's go ahead and do it. So now I'll actually get an actual reward.
Okay, so the narration, of course, is quite good. Um, and like I said, the music is very good. It's very Lords of the Ringish, if you could call it that. Um, I can't say enough good things about those two. I'm going to go ahead and hit continue. Okay. Okay, a lot of stuff just happened there. First of all, you saw the three heroes pop up and say something. Those are the three heroes in my deck that I chose. And, um, of course, whoever you choose is going to be dictates what's said. And then my starting threat level is 25. If you pick an all-Hobbit deck, the threat level is going to be low because Sauron ignored the Hobbits. They were a, a, a worthless race to him. And so uh, Sauron does not have as much focus on them. And so they generated less overall threat. And that's what this 25 means. And here at 29, bad things will happen. And you can click on it and see that uh, three forest spiders will be summoned to the mix. And then at 32, uh, every, every enemy is going to get plus two health. At 39, uh, one random hero is going to be exhausted through the next round. And then Gloin is going to be poisoned at 46. And then at 50, we lose. Automatic loss. Okay, so so this threat level is going to go up. Uh, it usually only goes up one per round uh, when you sit and turn. But there's a lot of factors that can make it go up by more than one. Um, okay, uh, what they're asking us to do is, uh, you know, we have a deck of, I think it's 30 cards. And... Um, they shuffled it, and then these are the first ones drawn. And so we could say, okay, uh, you know, are we happy with this as our starting hand? Well, Gandalf is very expensive, and so I'm going to say no to him. I'll take him later. And these will go back into the deck. Um, I could get rid of the Adventuring Hobbit, but he's really good. So I'm going to just go ahead and keep... Gandalf's really good, too. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say, let's just replace Gandalf for now. And boom, our quest begins. So, our mission is to rescue Gloin before he's overwhelmed. Defeat four spider units or defeat every enemy in play. Okay, so there's... If you've played the original game, this won't be so confusing to you, but if you've never experienced a game like this before, um, the way this game tends to work is you're going to travel between one location to the next. Um, for those of you who are war gamers, and this is like a foreign concept to you, uh, this is actually a lot like DVG's Warfighter series. So in Warfighter, you know, you may have like a progress that you have to make to go from one room to the next until you, um, you know, accomplish your goal. Uh, that's what this one is. So you'll, you'll be in a particular area, and then you have to like clear the area, meet whatever objective, so you, and then your, your heroes have to move to the next area until you can finally get to the final area and, and then accomplish your objective. That's the way this is as well. And of course, if none of you are familiar with Warfighter, just ignore that. <laughs> um, but uh, <clears throat> so that's our goal. And there's an upkeep, fees, uh, upkeep phase that just happened. Um, and so if there was any like uh, activities that are done during upkeep, it would have occurred. And so now we start. First of all, uh, let's talk, like, what do we see here? Well, first, you see is a forest spider. This two is how much it costs to put him into play. We are playing against Sauron. That's him over here. That's his deck of cards. So it's there is an actual AI we're up against. And Sauron has three money. That's his resources. So if he wants to play this forest spider card, he would have to pay two. Now, these are already in play, so don't get me wrong. But if there's, like, one of those cards in his hand, he has to have enough money to play the cards from his hand. So what does this spider do? Well, it attacks with a two, which means he'll do two damage to any of us that he attacks. And he has four health, so we have to do four damage to him to kill him. That's basically how the spider works. And then there's a hatchling spider, which is just a bit weaker, um, but that's also in play. We have our three heroes, and then we have Gloin, who's like a free ally. Um, you know, because the mission gives him to, to, to us as an ally. And then we have the ability to play cards from our hand, but we have three resources as well. 
So for example, I cannot play Adventuring Hobbit because he costs four. And you'll notice that there's a little glowing uh, element around all four of my other cards because those are the ones I can afford to play. There's basically three types of cards. There's the, um, the cards that are allies. So uh, I can have as many as seven allies on the screen. Sauron can put eight on the screen. Um, there is equipment like Bilbo's cloak. I actually have an example of everything. This is an ally, or so is this one. This is an example of equipment, and so I, I just right-clicked on it. Uh, if I play Bilbo's cloak, this will equip onto somebody, and, and when it does, um, during the upkeep phase, Sauron's going to lose one resource. <clears throat> so we cause him to lose money, which prevents him from playing as many cards as he wants, and it can only be played on a Hobbit only, which this is my Hobbit deck, so it made sense to have it. Um, and then the last thing is, an, these are events. So uh, this is a card that you play it and whatever it says happens. So this says grant plus one uh, progress to each of your heroes this round. Uh, and then let's talk about that. So we have Sam here. Sam does two damage, so if he attacks any of these guys, he'll do two damage to them. He has uh, one progress, so there isn't any progress stuff on the board, but sometimes there's going to be what's called a hazard. So, like, let's say there's just a tree blocking the trail, and we got to chop up the tree and get it off the trail. That would be a hazard that you have to apply progress points to, and then once you apply enough progress points to it, then you can overcome the, the hazard or obstacle. So he has a one for overcoming objectives, and it's called willpower, I guess. And he has nine health. And when these guys die, they die. I mean, it's uh, it's almost impossible to get them to come back uh, for your mission. So you don't want them to die. All right. Now, when you uh, place or right-click on somebody like Sam, he has these abilities down here, which... Um, oh, I thought there was a way to look at it. Um... But basically, uh, what this is saying is it's going to apply his willpower to this track, this feet meter, which we haven't talked about yet. And then this one here is a uh, defense button, which will give his unit guard. So what guard does is when Sauron goes, he gets to attack anybody he wants. Um, a guard will force any melee attack to go against the guarded character. So if Sam wants to be the guard, he can put up a guard... Uh, token, and that means nobody else will get attacked. Sam will be the first one. But as soon as somebody attacks Sam, uh, his guard feature goes away. So it's a one-time deal. Okay, you may be noticing Frodo has this like little mist going around him, and that's because Frodo has stealth. And so, as long as he doesn't take his turn, uh, they don't see him. So basically, he's invisible to all of them until he takes his turn. And then this Achieve here is basically saying that if we overcome an obstacle, he gets an extra buck for overcoming the obstacle, which there aren't any obstacles to overcome at the moment, so not quite as helpful, but Frodo's pretty awesome. Okay, and then um, uh, just some final things. These are your heroes. They got the little wings here, and then your ally doesn't, so that's sort of one of the ways. They also have like this bronzish, goldish uh, outline, whereas here you see silver. And uh, last but not least, let's talk about the fate meter. Uh, right now we have zero fate points. This little golden number, you can, if you click on this, uh, take that golden number and apply it towards fate. And if you ever reach three fate, you get what's called a ranger's cash, which will give plus two money to each player. There's only one player, but if you're playing multiplayer, this could change. And then there's woodland guidance where we would get an Elven Scout would just join us for free if we can get up to six. Now, sometimes <clears throat> these will be square instead of diamond because they are specific to this location only. So what these are saying is for this whole mission that we're on, uh, we can use these at any time during the mission. If it was square, like I said, it's only used here. Now, how do we finish this portion of the mission to move on to the next portion? Uh, that's what we were saying uh, we have to defeat four spider units. Or every unit. So if I can defeat all three of these 
this round, before I have to hit end phase, we will complete this and move forward. Uh, otherwise, I have to defeat four spiders. All right, I know that was a lot, um, but it'll start to make more sense if I uh, start to play. Uh, the way it works is I go, then he goes, then I go, then he goes, and everybody gets to go once. So right now, everybody's active, hence the reason they are all glowing. And I can choose to um, just click on a guy and attack, or I can play a card. Now, if I play a card, then that means nobody's actually going. None of these guys are going. So when I say I go and then he goes, it could be by playing a card or by playing one of these characters. <clears throat> now, one of the things that is uh, probably most important is you really should guard instead of allowing your guys to get pummeled. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, now, he has a special power. That's what this little button here is. And what that is is I can spend one buck to discard an attachment on them, but they don't have any. So I'm going to go ahead and guard with Gloin. Is that really what I want to do? What does this do? Oh, that's not bad. That's not necessary. Yeah, I'm going to guard. So you can see the little guard symbol. Okay. That went by fast, which is good. It's a good thing, because you don't want a game to go slow on these kind of things. But I know if you're new, it was like, what just happened? You probably saw that there was this little circular stuff going around him. That was the symbol to show that he was guarding. Saren took his turn. He played zero cards from his hand, and he just chose to attack with this spider. So this spider had no choice but to attack our guarded character. So the spider did two damage to him, and because he was guarding, he was able to do two damage back. So the spider's almost dead. Now, if I was not guarding, the spider would do two damage to him, and we would not have a counterattack. So that's the other advantage of guarding, is you get to do a counterattack. So uh, with that being said, I think I'm going to guard again. So we're going to guard with this guy. And see, it says plus one attack if guard is active. That's even more awesome. I didn't even realize that. And if I kill someone with him, Saren loses uh, money. I, I don't think I'm going to... I mean, I could technically kill this one. Ooh, that's something to consider. But you know what? I'm going to do uh, the guard. So there you can see I did three damage to him, even though he normally only does two. But as soon as his guard went away, his three attack went back down to two. It went by fast, but... Uh, that's how it works. Now, I am taking damage, which is not necessarily a good thing, but um, now I'm a little bit more of a pickle. This guy is for sure going to attack. I almost... Um, I can't stop it. I mean... Uh, Pippin here gains one progress, or one fate, which is this. For each... Um, threat, the threat meter gains, which I think is going to be awesome. I've never played with Pippin before, so I'm a little excited to try it. Achieve uh, is what happens uh, when you resolve an objective. It's going to restore one health, so he's going to heal people if we achieve things. Um, you know what? Let's raise the Shire and get an ally out. So you can see we got a Hobbit ally here. Who is that? Brandy Buck Sneak. <laughs> oh, I never saw him before. Okay, there's so many things to do with this guy, but I think what we're going to do is... Um, Sauron's out of uh, turns. Now, he could play a card from his hand, but uh, we don't have to worry about him attacking us this round. So I'm just going to play a card here, and let's get this cloak on somebody. And I think we're going to put Bilbo's cloak on F Frodo? Sure. We're going to put it on Frodo. And see this little purple thing show that he has a cloak on? And now, Sauron just played something. Uh, and you can see it's up here. He played Despair. So if you attack this enemy, it's going to add one to the threat meter over here. And same with Fro Frodo. You can see up here we have a cloak. So you can equip one weapon, one, I think, shield, armor, uh, one... What is that? A shadow, um, and then one cloak. 
So uh, I think the shadow is a bad thing. So um, anyways, you can equip three types of things on each hero. Okay, so there's a lot to do here. Uh, this two is really attractive because you, you sort of want to get this fate meter to go up, especially when you're in control of the game. But let's take control of the game. I'm going to go ahead and attack this spider right here. He does one damage, so we should kill it. Alright, so there's one down. So now it's his turn. So he's playing... Uh, he played this card that does one damage to every exhausted character. Which stunk. This one does two damage, so we're going to go ahead and kill him. Now, if I was uh, good enough, I would be able to do two damage to him, and I actually would uh, fulfill the progress for this round, but I can only do one damage with Frodo, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do this, and give us three points there. And what he did was he just he just uh, added a spider, um, which caused all kinds of things to happen. I think uh, that spider uh, caused one um, threat to occur over here, and you saw that this guy gave us one fate. So every time something causes the threat to go up, uh, we get one over here, which is his pretty awesome ability. We are more or less done, but what we could do is we could do this now, and I'm going to go ahead and do that, and what that did is that gave us two money. So we could do that, we could get her out, um, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And they just killed our hobbit ally, which uh, stinks. And so Sauron's been going bonkers here. Um, he hasn't finished his uh, full turn, and we're only going to be able to do one damage, so she's not very good, but what I'll go ahead and do is guard with her. So this spider had no choice but to attack her. So what they're saying is, is Sauron passed, and then now we're uh, doing upkeep. And you always get to draw two cards, at least at this difficulty level. And we end up getting Gandalf back anyway. So we got two of these adventuring hobbits. Gandalf, we can't afford any of them. We can only afford this guy. Um, this only helps us this round, so this is not worth doing. So we're going to be saving our money, is really what I'm trying to say. But we have some opportunities here to kill some stuff. And these guys do. this guy does two damage, but he has four health, so that's a problem. But I'm going to go ahead and kill what I can. So I'm going to kill this one. And yeah, he's taking a lot of damage here. Um, this is the only one left to go, so we're going to go ahead and finish him off. Oh, we're going to do it with Gloin. And now they're saying we completed the goal, right? So we can travel to the next level. Sauron knows that we can travel, so he passed. Because his money he carries with him and his cards to the next location. So we can click travel right now to go to the next location, but don't do that. This is a time for us to really revel in a way. So we can heal, we can do whatever we can. And like one of the things for sure I'm going to do is I'm going to make the fate meter go up because this is going to come with us to the next mission and so let's get that fate meter all the way up to 12 if we can <clears throat> and um, as you can see that's what I'm doing now with um, uh, what's his name Sam I'm actually going to guard because his guard status carries with us to the next location as well alright so everybody's taking their turn I could play cards if I wanted, and now, and only now, I'm going to travel. Alright, so they're telling us to either go back the way we came, or find another route. So you get these like little cheesy paths choices. Um, it's really difficult 
when it's your first time playing to know what to do. I can tell you that this way is going to have a lot of fights against enemies, and this way is going to have a lot of like uh, hazards and traveling. So with the type of party I have, I prefer finding another route. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Uh, so right here we have to resolve every hazard to find your way through the forest. These hazards, as you can see, have these yellow markers underneath them. That's where this, these willpower numbers come in. So I could use Frodo here in his willpower of three and conquer one of these hazards. And he has the achieve, which will get me an extra buck when that happens. This guy has an achieve as well that will heal people when he overcomes one, but he only has a two, so he needs some help. Um, and then we have um, a lot of things. Uh, the record keeper will let us draw extra cards, but this adventuring hobbit grants plus one every time a hazard resolved, even whether he's involved or not. So that's a really good one. And we also have, now these are free, so I can get one of him out. And then this is specific to just this location. I can apply one progress to every hazard. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And this gets a little difficult, but these buttons down here are for this uh, event. So you just got to find this and click yes. So boom, I just did one to each. And one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to... I can get out uh, this Elven Scout, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm also going to get out my Adventuring Hobbit. Alright, so Sam uh, guarded like he was supposed to. Did three damage to this guy. And we're going to go ahead and kill this spider before it can attack us. With loin. So he's kind of caused me to lose two bucks. He sucks that way. And we can get our two bucks back if we rescue the horses. That's a funny one. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use Frodo here to rescue the horses. Get our two bucks back. And then I actually got two more bucks because he gives a buck every time we accomplish one. And then this one gives a buck every time he accomplishes one. Now, we got another hazard. This one is capturing our cards, so we can't play these cards. So, one, two, three, four, five. I'm at my maximum level of allies, so I can't play any cards, any more heroes, even if I wanted to. But you can see here I got a bunch of twos. This one reduces each player's hand to three if I hit end phase. This one will cause the threat to go up one if I hit end phase. This one grants plus one money to Sauron every time there's upkeep. That's at the beginning of a phase. And this one reduces our draw to only one card from each player. So there's a lot going on here, but what I'm going to do is... Yeah, let's get rid of that one. 
That gave us another buck. And Pippin, we grant plus one. For each threat that in your games achieve, restore one health to a hero. So what this is saying is that he wants to heal somebody. So we're going to go ahead and heal Sam. Alright, this unit is flying. So we can only hit a flying unit with a ranged unit. Which is what we have here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now he's dealing a damage to every ally. And here we have a progress of two. So I'm going to go ahead and apply it. We're just making all kinds of money here. Sauron passed. He has zero money. So really we could do whatever we want here. Um, this is, uh, as you can see, only one progress each. Um, that's going to raise us by a threat. It's going to grant him money. And this removes the capture. Uh, I'm going to... Um, I think I'm just going to do... I'm going to kill the spider. And for this one, I'm going to guard again. Because we've got another round coming up. And yeah, i got to hit end phase. And you're seeing this go up quite a bit because the threat meter went up one naturally at the end of the round, and it went up one again because of the card that was in play. Uh, so yes, we triggered this Gnawing Dread. We gained our two cards. So a couple of things happen. Um, we hit one of these uh, limits, which now means that until we... Uh, successfully finish and travel to the next location, this threat meter is going to go up by plus one every time we hit end phase. The other thing that happened is one of these, this one, during upkeep gave him an extra buck. Now this card is great, so is this one and this one and etc, but I can't play them because I'm at my maximum seven. Now I could replace one of these if I wanted, like for example if I like I want to replace her, I can. And I could put the Adventuring Hobbit in, which, as you can see, is a little bit better than her for helping us to get through these things. Um, I don't know. I sort of feel like it's fine to just hold them. Uh, Eleven Zs here. Restore one health to every Hobbit. Apply one progress for each Hobbit at full health. Now, that's an interesting one, because I only have one Hobbit at full health, but I am going to use it. So let's try. All right, so I get to apply one progress and another one. Ooh, that one has five health. So uh, he's guarding, so he's going to get attacked, though, for three damage here. So uh, that's not good. So the best thing we can do, then, is let's just heal, right? And then Gloin can finish him off. So he passed. So now it's nothing but unlimited actions for us. So I'm going to go ahead and take the extra money. And this is another opportunity for extra money. And you can see we accomplished our goal, so we could travel. But like I said, you don't want to necessarily do that, um, at least not yet. Uh, I do like guarding with Sam, but his health is in a bad shape. <laughs> um, but no matter what, uh, you at least want to do this because uh, you want this fate meter to be up. Uh, there's nothing on here now, but when we go to the next location, something might show up. And and it's nice to have your fate meter up. Oh gosh, I feel bad about guarding with him again. If he ever defeats somebody, 
he does cause Sauron to lose money. Uh, we haven't been using him that way, of course. Now this one can't do anything other than guard. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then with this guy, I'll just go ahead and do this. And yeah, let's travel. Okay, <clears throat> so we have to search the abandoned camp to learn what happened here. Gloin must survive. So this is a similar concept. Searching, of course, means we need to... Oh. So we hit this, so now there's two extra health that was given to every enemy. And I can already tell you that I have way too many allies in my deck. Because look at this, this is all allies and I can't play a dang one of them. Um, so the enemies have a whole bunch of health, which is not good. Uh, this here is our objective. However, it's locked. See that little lock symbol there? So I can't put progress towards this until I remove this. This obstacle is keeping you from engaging any other objectives. So we have to clear the path, and, and only then can we do the objective. Now I do have this King's Foil, which is going to restore two health to every character, and I'm going to do that right now. All right, and what do I want to do? Like I said, I have nothing but crap. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So this grants... Gave me a whole bunch of cards. And some of these are equipment. So like this one here, Favor of the Lady. I'm going to go ahead and play that. give it to Frodo here. Oh, that'll replace that attachment. Uh, I will give it to him then. And then we have a shield here that gives plus two health and block. Now, who's the perfect person to give that to? Uh, you know it. Sam. So we healed Sam by two, and now he has this thing called block. So this little block symbol is permanent until this gets removed. And what that means is that the first melee damage, not ranged, but melee, is always blocked. So somebody has to do two damage to him in order to hit him for just one. If somebody does one damage to him, then he takes no damage at all. Now this guy here, he got an attachment uh, that gives him plus two attack. So now he does four damage. So he's a bit of a problem child. Um, I think I played everything I can play. The Gandalf cards here are, uh, they take a spot. So I would need, like, her to die, for example, in order for the Gandalf card to come into play. But, um, I'm very happy with where things are. Uh, for example, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And it gives me two more bucks. Like, I'm rolling in the money here. Uh, this is just bad design on my part. I got way too many allies here. Okay, I want to kill this guy. Um, gotta do it, because he does four damage if he ever gets to go again. And of course they keep healing him. Uh, so let's... Attack again. Now, one thing we can do is, for example, I can attack with her and finish him, right? It did spawn this. 
And then what I could do is I could like actually bring Gandalf in if I wanted. I don't know if I want to. But let's do like the Wandering Took. Yeah, let's do this. So now it's saying I gotta make room. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of her. And after you play a card, discard a card. Oh, I lost one of my Gandalf's crap. So uh, I was able to bring him in and as you can see, look, I could attack with him too. So you could attack with somebody, they get exhausted, and then replace them with somebody else and just keep attacking, 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 and then your round never ends. So it's just a, a little trick you can do. But I'm going to go ahead and finish the mission here. So we can definitely travel, and now it's saying I can heal somebody, and I'm going to go ahead and heal uh, Gloin. Oh, I can only heal a hobbit. Oh, that wasn't smart of me. All my hobbits are healed. Oh, no, they're not. I guess I could heal Sam. Alright, this flying creature, I can only hit with this because he's the only one that has range. So I can't do anything about that, but I'm going to go ahead and attack the wolf. And the wolf... And then I'm going to go ahead and guard. And then we're going to travel. Okay. Oh, sorry. I was daydreaming there. Um, so you might be thinking, oh gosh, this looks really easy. Even with you screwing up your deck, Jeff, you're winning pretty easily. It is the tutorial mission. <laughs> so uh, I don't want you to get like super disappointed in the game there. Um, okay, so we gotta, first of all, this is the final encounter. So don't hold anything back here. Um, Wall of Webs, we have to resolve it to break through the spider's trap, which is this thing. Now, the Wall of Webs is locked. And it's saying... Oh, I have to sneeze. <laughs> okay. The Wall of Webs is going to, for every upkeep phase, enter a new spider guard into play. Um... And we can't attack the Wall of Webs as long as these Spider Guards are in place. We have to kill all the Spider Guards. Um, so this is an annoying one where the Guards are constantly getting in the way. Now, we have this ranged guy who can ignore the Guards and hit anybody. But he doesn't have the ability to go and do this. So it's one of those missions where you have to persevere uh, a bit. And then this is location specific. It deals two damage to every enemy and equips Spike Trap every enemy. It's a pretty awesome one, and uh, I'm actually very tempted to go ahead and, and do that. Uh, we have tons of money, and like I said, I did a bad job because this is the only uh, card I can play uh, directly, and I think I will actually, so we're going to go ahead and do this. Alright, so Sam did his job and guarded. Uh, I actually have quite a few. I have uh, minus two, uh, f basically, threat before you travel to a new location. Uh, summon one random hobbit ally. 
which seemed great at the time, but it's just another one of these, really. Um, so what do I want to do? Like, this guy was very helpful to give me a lot of money, but he's not helping me anymore. Same with this guy. He's not helping me pretty much at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and guard with him. And because our goal here is just to absorb the hits. All right. And for Sam, I can guard one more time. Just want to go ahead and do that. And they didn't actually attack. So with Frodo, I'm going to go ahead and do this. And we got our seven. And I'm going to go ahead and hit it. So we hit everybody, and we just put traps on everybody. So that part's awesome. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this guard. They went ahead and killed our guy, which we don't care about at all. Um, in fact, we can put Gandalf in. And so we could draw three cards. We can lower the threat by three or just deal three damage. So we're going to deal three damage to somebody. And then we're going to use Gloin to finish this guy off. And here we go. And now I can heal. And boom, campaign's complete. So This this doesn't have anything to do with Okay, so uh, for example, that was I guess the second time I finished this tutorial campaign. So I'm actually going to get some rewards here. First of all, you get a thousand just for doing it. So if you really wanted to grind, uh, you could. And this would be a way to get all kinds of points. Uh, because of my second completion, I get a new avatar, which is... And then I get 200 for each of these challenges. My only thing about this is I wish these challenges were more transparent when you start the mission. Like, I don't know where I would be able to go look this up. Like, to know that Gloin needed to have seven or more health by the time you finished, I would have liked to have known that while I was playing. Um, here, I needed to play ten allies. So, what that meant is I needed to kill some of my allies or remove them and replace them, and then use Gloin to remove a shadow attachment, which I never did. And uh, since this is the first time these heroes have completed this uh, quest, I get 500 for each. And boom, just like that, we're done. So a uh, couple of things. I know I jumped right into the tutorial, but there is encounters, and these are supposedly extremely hard. I have never tried one yet, so um, uh, I can't tell you. And in fact, uh, it'd be fun to actually try one. Um, the campaign is what I've been doing. And for example, I finished Shadow's Reach uh, several times, in fact. Uh, you can see... I got Sting here for the first completion. Um, so we we did uh, Shadow's Reach. Uh, you can see I've done it twice now. Um, and this is like the, the last quest level. Um, what I haven't done is Shadow's Fall, for example. This Silver Claws quest, I've never, I've never done the second campaign yet. Um, this game's very new for me. I, I just purchased it a short time ago. Uh, this adventure one was a load of fun. It's the Lords, the Fords of Eisen, 
And what this is, is if you've ever played uh, Hearthstone, this is a mode where you start the game with, uh, I think, no deck at all. Or if you do have a deck, it's like very basic. And then it draws a bunch of cards, and you get to pick which ones you want to add to your deck. So, so you're like dynamically building your deck as you play. And then you're, you're going to build like you'll pick four of one thing and two of another and, you know, so forth and so forth. And then once you've built the deck that you want to build, then, uh, and you don't get to, like, go back and change your mind. Like, they give you a first set of cards. You have to pick, like, two of the four. Then they give you another set, and you're hoping to find some nice combos, right? And um, anyways, it might be better just to show you, but but uh, it was very fun. It was actually quite challenging. Um and uh, very interesting mode. I, I actually, I'm impressed that they did it, because this is not one where you build a deck ahead of time. Um, and then, of course, uh, just random stuff that you can do just for fun. So, uh, what should we do? We, let's try one of these encounters. I've never done one before. Uh, this Feast for Trolls sounds like it's going to be a fighty-fighty one. So, which deck should we use? I would say, okay, let's do Spirit, which is not a fighty-fighty deck. <laughs> um, maybe we should do our Dwarven deck, or... We could do our our Tactics deck, which I don't know if I've ever done before, so I don't know how good it is. We could still try it. Um, let's try the Dwarven one. I have no idea how good these decks are. Some of these I built once and never played them. Um, Oh, very cool. So I picked the Dwarven deck for this. Um, so King Dane sent some people out. They never came back, and now King Dane himself is going to go see what happened. Okay, um, sure. I don't know my deck well enough to know if that was a good start or not. So it's a deal with the goblins. Continue your search for the lost dwarves. Alright, so they... They gave us this Yar, Yarwolf guy who's ranged. And this little symbol here just means that he's unique and you can't have more than one of him on the field. Uh, you're going to notice all the heroes have a unique symbol. Okay, let's talk about these. Dwaylin uh, gets an extra attack and willpower if he's at six or more health. Dis, or however you pronounce her name, um, has counter. So it deals one, end, one damage when defending against melee attacks. Gains protect after triggering defense. So... She's a badass. I think it's a she, because I heard the voice sounded female. That's the thing with dwarves. <laughs> um, this is like a really awesome character, and I'll show you what that is like in a second. And then here, uh, Dale Ironfoot 
gets plus one attack to all the other dwarves as long as he hasn't taken his turn. So basically, uh, you just don't want to do anything with him until last possible minute. So this Gondoran shield gives plus two and block to somebody. So I'm going to go ahead and give that, and then the armor here gains block and guard. Ooh, they're both good. I'm going to do the Gondoran shield to this. Alright, so then I'm going to go ahead and guard with her, and what she does is she gets protect. That's this little yellow shield. So protect means she doesn't even take any damage when she gets attacked, even if it would have caused damage. It's zero damage whatsoever. And then she was able to attack back and completely kill whatever just attacked her. So now I'm going to play... I would have loved to have gotten this out there. Um, this is interesting. We have to attack him first. He has five health, which is not super helpful. Hmm. Nope, I don't want to go with him first. I'm just going to take the money. Oh, we lost Yarrowwolf already. Which I'm not too sure I care that much about. Um, we can get this guy out, so let's do that. He has block. Alright, so there's a lot going on here. We can give one health to every character. We can grant one money to every player for three rounds. We can grant stealth. Or summon Toron. Or ready every hero, which is really good. Um, we have a lot of progress we need to make. You have to bypass or defeat the goblins, attack directly, or apply two progress for each enemy defeated, which that part is actually really cool. Plus one for each unwounded enemy. Interesting. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and finish him. And you can see that reduced his progress by two. This one has a four, so we're going to go ahead and finish him. And then we finally have this guy, which uh, we're going to hit him because he does a lot of damage. So Sauron passed, and then we had to also pass. So here we go. And here we go. We get our two cards. This is permanent, by the way. So it's going to grant two health and one progress to every single ally. Uh, however, we need to kill him. Alright, um, see this is a situation where I want more money than I can count. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play this card. Oh, oh crap, it's per ally. I thought it was for the heroes too. So all it did was buff him. Oh, that was a waste, such a total waste. Uh, pay attention to your cards, folks. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Um, I want... I probably want to guard, even though... Uh, no, I'm going to do this. we got to get this up. Then we can use him to kill somebody. So we accomplished our goals, so we could actually travel. And do we want to... Um, uh, 
I'm not going to travel. Let's do one more round. What does this do? Plus one for each unwounded enemy. I think everybody... Well, yeah. We're going to do one more round. So all that did was make our cards more expensive. And then see, this is... Uh, Sauron plays this automatically. Because... Um, the game recognized that we're we're tr what is what's it called turtling, we're turtling right now because we know we could have traveled and we specifically chose not to because I want to beef up this scale over here on the left, and so the game knows that so it throws this in that's going to make their threat meter go up more and more, so they're punishing us for uh, for wanting to do this. Now this is location specific. It's going to give me one buck for the next three rounds, but it's not going to do me any good because we're going to travel this round. And this one also isn't helpful. So basically, none of them are helpful. Um, what we want to do, though, is we want to... Um, we just want to beef this up. Uh, we can maybe get rid of this. Uh, the problem is... Yeah, we just want to beef this up over here. So let's do that. Uh, see, Sauron already passed, which means he's not even going to attack us. So um, we're just going to beef up. Now with this one, I'm actually going to guard, just because wherever we end up in our next spot, I want him to take the damage. And then... I know this is more expensive. But I'm going to put him in. Because he'll give us two more. And we'll take one more. And now we'll travel. So he took a lot of threat for doing what we just did. So. That might backfire. Oh, jeez. Defeat every troll, or hang on until foraging time ends. Oh my gosh. Okay. So... Oh my gosh, we just lost some really nice cards. Alright, let's see. A Confusing Shadow... Ambush. Capture in heavy cauldron any ally that... I don't understand what that does. Whoever he attacks gets exhausted. Defender discards a card. Restore one health per player to every troll. Oh my gosh. So we got to get rid of that fast. And then this thing is a... Uh, so it's a timer. What this is, is it, it'll tick down one every round. All right, well, the good news is we get some free stuff here. So let's see what we got. We have 
We can ready every hero. We can deal 4 damage per player to one enemy. We can summon Torun, who is actually pretty good. We can gain, grant one random attachment to each player. Hmm. And grant a health to every player. Hmm. These things have 16 health, so even if we did 4 damage to one enemy, I don't know what good that does. We need progress. That's what we need. That's good. Torun will help a little bit. Alright, let's do it. Let's get him in here. He has block, which is really good. And we have this Lancer, which has ranged, so that's also good. So we'll go ahead and get him in. So now we have to discard a card. Ay, ay, ay. Um, two health and block, huh? And this one is restore two to one character and ready it. This is really difficult to... Hmm. I think... So one of the strategies here is you want to keep guarding to protect your heroes from dying. Like, if you lose an ally, it's not as big of a deal as losing a hero. Um... This guy, of course, has four attack because Dane is giving him a really healthy attack. And, of course, if you block, he does damage back. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And this one, of course, attacked Dane because he was also blocking at the time. Uh, I think... So like, he does a whole bunch of damage. So I'm going to play this and let's ready him. So he just added two attack to him. That's not good. So let's go ahead and get rid of this nonsense. So what they just did is they reduced all of our allies to zero, which him was the big... that was the big nasty part. So we're going to go ahead... So he just gained block, which is awful. Now this guy has range attack. So range attack ignores block. So, or no, it did not. It did not. Okay. Um, Jesus. Deal one damage to every unit that attacks this round. Oh my gosh.
discard a card. Dane is close to death over here. I, I'm a little worried about him. And I can't do these because these two here are blocking. What the heck? So where did he go? Capture in Heavy Cauldron. Where's the Heavy Cauldron? So he attacked an ally which made him disappear. That stink- oh. I don't know what just happened there. Jesus. Okay, so what I did was it, it just gave me basically another full round, which is awesome. Um... Okay, so I take a damage if I attack. I'm not sure it matters. That's the cauldron guy, right? Let's see if we can attack him. And then... Okay, so... Basically, Sauron passed, so we can do whatever we want here. And because because we have block, that one damage back doesn't do anything to us. So we're going to go ahead and... And then I'm going to do Keenan Cunning, which is going to let us go again. And I'm going to go ahead and do this and that and that. And something bad's triggering over here. So another troll just came out. Jesus. Alright, we did get a Gandalf. Which might not be bad. This Warden guy's surge basically means that you get another turn. So if I put him on the into play, uh, then I get to go again. before. So I can put him in play and attack right away if that's what... I wanted to do. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and protect here. And let's do again. I'm concerned about him having only four health. The three damage is very attractive 
But the minus three threat is better. Because I was going to trigger this next thing. Uh, this is a good one, but... Yeah, I'm going to get rid of him. Alright, so... I did one damage to every ally. Bunch of jerks. Okay, stalwart means they get to go twice. So we don't want that happening. So we're going to go ahead... Get rid of that. Yeah, they just killed Dane. That's not good, folks. Uh, and it was because I put that armor on him that gives him guard all the time. I really needed to, to do it the other way around. That guard needed to be on on dis. That was a big mistake on my part. Just not used to playing this deck. Uh... I just killed another one. This is not getting... this is not good. Throw some vittles and it trumps off because it's off to dinner. We're still not done with this mission. Oh, there we go. We're finally done with the mission. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, a couple of things. We're below six health here, so Dwaylin's not quite as good as he used to be. Um, but we're going to go ahead and kill this. Now this guy did four damage, but he took no damage because he has that guard ability, which is really, really good. Um, so we can travel, so we don't have to kill this guy. So I'm just going to build up, build up. I think we want to get the adventuring hobbit out. Because that will also build up. And as far as he goes, it'd be nice to heal. He can't. But we'll go ahead and build up. And this one will do the protect. Alright. So we're going to travel into the next location.
These trolls are nasty. <laughs> That's for certain. Defeat every troll or delay through the night in hopes that dawn will bring relief. And that is a long delay. Eight turns. The problem with eight turns is that the threat meter goes up. And if you get to 50, you lose. Uh, so let's see what we got here. We have the best cook. Resolve the current objective. Each player draws one card. That's interesting. Remove block from every troll this round. If he doesn't have block, deal two damage. Grant plus one and draw a card. Release one random character from the heavy cauldron. Which, we do have one in the cauldron. Um, I'm just too curious of like, what does this do? So, let's go ahead and try it. Oh my gosh, we, we did it. There's another one? That's a... Uh, that's not nice. Okay, so what do I want to do then? Um, this guy carried over. Ah, oh, see that pursuit keyword? That means he moves with you to the next location. Jerk. Uh, let's try... That's what these guys are here for, is to raise that up. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and block again. Now I have to lose a card. I'll go ahead and lose that one. Alright, so what's this one? That one does two damage to every troll. That would give us some money, which would help us bring Gandalf on the board. Um, let's do this one. So we got our... We're up to nine bucks now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're at our maximum guys on the board. Gonna go ahead and heal him and bring him back. What does this do? That's the heavy cauldron. Oh, we gotta we gotta conquer that. So we gotta make room for this guy. So who do I get rid of? Ended up getting the same exact guy. Hmm. This one. Got a whole bunch of these, folks. Well, I mean, we're looking at exhaust any character that Bert attacks. Heavy Cauldron captures each ally that Brim damages. And the Heavy Cauldron's back. The Defender discards a card. I don't like you. So we'll get rid of you. Or try to, at least. I'm up to 14. Do I dare to bring Gandalf in? Can draw three cards, deal three damage, or minus three threat. Uh, what would I do with them? I mean, if I did three damage, I could do seven damage to somebody. Or I can get rid of one of these. Don't know how super helpful that is. Ugh, I'm going to just wait.
This is what I needed. If attack would defeat a character, the character remains in play. I needed that for Dane. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this. Hmm. I'll go ahead and get rid of the guard. I'm just trying my hardest to to just defeat this. Oh, another one comes out. Oh, come on. It's getting so crazy. So we're going to reduce the threat again cuz this I don't want to get up to here. I deal one damage to every exhausted character. And then I could put four progress on something. So like I could get rid of this, this, or this. Which would get us our ally back. Or I could just, let's go for broke. Let's get our Lancer out here. He's not going to win it for us, but... You can only put one progress towards something. Or he can attack someone. Like, he's only going to do one damage to him. That's the problem. It's such a huge problem. Uh, look at that. They got up to 46 anyways. Because they're generating so much threat. Two damage to every character. Grant guard to every troll, which is awful. The guard to every troll part. We lost Dwaylin. Oh my gosh. Uh, see, like, I would love to do this, but I can't because every troll has guard. So what I have to do is uh, this. Because one of these, I think, that knowledge of trolls helps us. So we're going to go ahead and get this out there. We're going to guard with him again. Looks like we have to discard a card. And here's the problem. I'm only going to make it to here. Pfft, fudge. Killed him too. And there it is. It goes up to 50 and we lose. Oh my gosh. That was winnable though. I was very close to winning that one. Um, just a couple of maybe smarter decisions on my part. I could have won that. So anyways, that's... um. That's... oh, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. So, uh, anyways, uh, sorry the screen just went blank. I quit the game. I was trying to just quit the scenario. Anyways, thanks for watching. If, uh, if you like this, I could play a few more. I can show you some of my decks in a little bit more detail or whatever. Um, I've always enjoyed this game when Fantasy Flight game made it. Uh, I was annoyed because you had to make a unique deck for every mission. Like, I'm the kind of person that I want to make a deck and then use it for a whole campaign. Which, uh, you, even in this one, if you look at the campaigns, every, 
uh, scenario, you could switch which decks you use. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, but if I have a computer to manage my decks for me, uh, then I am. <laughs> because when you had to do it uh, physically, you know, on the card table, it was really painful. Because you had to, like, remember which cards... Because, like, you might use the same cards over multiple decks. So you can't just, like, keep them in a box and say, okay, this is my deck for this mission. So uh, the computer makes a, a game like that a lot more um, less tedious, a lot more manageable. Anyways, um, as always, uh, stay awesome and um, stay safe.